I was always told that if you have a little hitch in your step, it can look really cool. It can look really hip. But if it's your hip that's causing the hitch in your step, it can be a sign of something much more serious and can affect your quality of life. Joining me right now is uh, Dr. George Feliciano and Richard Pfeiffer. Uh, Dr. Feliciano is with uh, Community Network. And I I've had friends. I'm, I'm, I'm old for television, but not that old. But I I've had friends who have already gone through uh, hip replacement procedures. And when someone even mentions that, people... People cringe. I mean, the idea of that having to ha happen to someone uh, used to be a painful procedure, but not necessarily anymore. Yeah, you know, hip replacement's been around since really the 50s, you know, and it's uh, continued to change as technology and as we understand materials and even get an idea of how the body actually works and what we can actually do to return ourselves to our lives. And it still continues to be a procedure that has one of the highest satisfaction rates and truly a life-changing procedure. Well, Richard, so. in, in your case, how, what, would you just start experiencing some pain, or was there a, an, an instance that made you realize, I need to see somebody? Well, really, over a period of, of time, a year or so before uh, I visited Dr. Feliciano, I noticed that I wasn't walking the, in the golf course okay. anymore, and golf is my main priority, and so because of that, uh, I decided to seek his opinion and uh, get an x-ray done and have him take a look at things. And so it just progressed over time to where uh, it became very bothersome. And I decided it was time to do something about it. So I saw him in uh, May of last year for the first time. And at that point, uh, he did an x-ray, showed me where the degeneration was. Uh, I had one synovial injection, I think, uh, to start with to see how that would work and when it didn't uh, then in November of last year I made the decision uh, that we probably should do it and he recommended that uh, we do this and because of the new uh, direct interior approach that he is so excellent at by the way mm -hmm. um, I decided it was the best the best thing for me to do and it's been Exceptional! It's been marvelous for are you, me. Are you back on the course? Uh, five weeks after he did the operation. Five weeks after? I played golf in Florida, yes, sir. Oh, my gosh. Well, I, I know from the old, I don't even know what the old procedure was called, but versus the, this procedure, I mean, being on a golf course in a matter of weeks instead of months was probably unheard of. Yeah, it, you know, th that is something that you don't really see very commonly, and I think the direct interior approach has kind of opened that up to a lot of people of all sorts of range of motivations, ages, mm -hmm. as well as severity of the disease. Um, to give you a little background, you know, the traditional yeah, approach, which has been ongoing for decades. And, and successful. But and a successful. More I mean, we've, we've uh, changed a lot of lives, even with the traditional approach. The incision is usually made from the side, as people would say, like, well, you've got to go through my butt to get to my hip. How mm -hmm. does that work? You know, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah exactly. That'd be the first about? question. <laughs> uh, but we do. Mm -hmm. Everyone's familiar with the gluteus maximus muscle, and that's the first muscle that you have to split going through the traditional approach. Mm -hmm. And then two-thirds of the surgeons will go through the back of the hip, bringing off five structures that Oof. they separate off of the back of the femur. Mm -hmm and enter the hip that way to do the same procedure that we're talking about. Other surgeons split that gluteus maximus, they go around to the front of the hip then and take off two or three tendons to actually detach and get it in the hip that way. Through this direct anterior approach, we actually make the incision instead of through your butt, actually through the front of the thigh. Okay. So as Richard was pointing out earlier, he goes, you don't have to sit on a lump of scar the rest of your life, but <laughs> right. you actually have two. But in doing so, we're actually able to accomplish the same procedure, separate really only the capsule from the hip itself, observe one of the biggest principles we have in orthopedics when we operate on a leg or an arm is to go in between two muscles and not disturb those muscles, separate them, mm -hmm. and through a skillful set of placement of retractors, actually open up the hip, do our job, and get out of there with disrupting really the least possible and sparing all the other tissues, which ordinarily through the traditional approach, you have to disrupt to get in that way. So dumbing it down for a uh, local talk show host like, like myself, basically you're messing with less stuff to get to what you need to fix. Correct. Right? Very much so, <laughs> okay. yeah. Okay, and what do we have here? Um, Th this is actually a model that actually shows after the hip has already been done, it actually has half of the half of the pelvis, so it shows the socket with the component in place, mm -hmm. uh, a metal ball that shows the stem. I brought actually one here of what actually goes into the hip in the same model that Richard actually has in. Okay. But it's actually the same weight 
and such of the actual stem that actually goes in. And in terms, after this is done and it's successful, which you said the success rate is, is, is huge, you've improved a lot of people's lives, are there, are there um, should there be expected limitations or is the sky the limit in terms of any sort of physical activity? Obviously, he was back on a golf course in five weeks. Years ago, everyone remembers that Bo Jackson probably had the most famous hip replacement. He attempted to return to professional sports, but do people need to be realistic after the fact? Well, the sense of realism happens is the same way that you drive your car. The more miles you're going to put on your tires, the faster they're going to wear out. Okay. So there still is that because the improvements that have come even in the last 10 years has been actually this what how we make this ball, mm -hmm. what we put in the socket, and the parts that actually rub together. And that's a tremendous actual improvement. The direct anterior approach allows people to have a much wider range of motion that we allow faster and sooner mm -hmm. so that they can actually retain and obtain, get that motion. Whereas a lot of times we're worried about dislocation for our patients through the traditional approach because mm -hmm. we have detached a lot that we have to wait to heal. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that healing has three, four, five, six months in some of these people. So by obviating that, removing what we usually detach and then wait to heal back, mm -hmm. the dislocation risk has probably dropped to even less than a tenth of a percent, you wow. know, you might estimate. There are no direct numbers. And bottom line, you got your golf game back. Got my golf game back better than ever. I owe it all to him. I, it, I, as I've said before, I mean, he's been blessed with great ability. Uh, in my opinion, and he also has a lot of compassion. Uh, I could be his biggest cheerleader. I mean, he's done a great thing for me, and I'm queasy when it comes to <laughs> medical procedures, obviously something as big as a hip. Well, stick, stick to the golf course. Maybe not cheerleading. Okay. You can just yeah. cheerleading well, yeah. the couch. Yeah. We have, we have uh, Community Network's uh, information and Dr. Feliciano's information on our website, IndyStyle.tv. Doctor, thank you so yeah, much for sharing. Thank you very much for having me. Congratulations. I'm glad you're doing so well. Thank you. We'll, we'll talk courses uh, after the break. When we okay. come back.